everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I help my students master the concepts of protein synthesis by doing a very engaging, fun review game um, that will involve a little relay race in your classroom. So let's get started. Before we jump into the nuts and bolts of actually setting up this relay uh, race game in your classroom, um, if you are struggling to create expert learners in your classroom and your students really need help studying to master the content of your course, if you click on the link in the description below, it will bring you to a workbook with five free strategies that you could be using to help your students become expert learners. It will, I walk you through five strategies I think students need to be taught for how to study content in your course. So if you need some more help making those expert learners, make sure to click on that link below. But in today's video, I really wanna help you figure out how to create expert learners when it comes to the topic of protein synthesis. I find that the topic of protein synthesis is one of the most difficult topics for students to understand or grasp in a high school biology course. In my district, we teach biology to freshmen. So when these students come to me, they, they really struggle with some of these more complex, high content topics because they simply just lack the skills of studying and sometimes you know, really going through and um, mastering all of the vocab related to the topic. And so I wanted to come up with a very engaging, fun way to help my students review the steps involved in protein synthesis. It's a multi-step process and each step has uh, very fine details that students are required to know how this works. Now I will say because this is a high school course, I am not required to go into very, very, very specific details about the steps involved in transcription or translation like you would in an AP course or a college level course. Um, in our state, the, the big takeaway is kind of what happens during transcription, what happens during translation, big picture wise to end up creating a protein. So because of that, the steps are kind of boiled down into just what, what's the product of transcription, what's the product of translation, with a little bit of detail explaining how this is going to happen. So I wanted to come up with something that was more engaging to help big picture review what is going on within each of these major steps of protein synthesis. And so on my way to work one day, I was thinking, you know, this, this is a multi-step process. How could I do this? How can I help students review this in a more fun way than just giving them a worksheet where they're transcribing and translating? And so all of a sudden, I just had this idea. What about a relay race where each student is doing a different step within protein synthesis and handing it off to the next? and looking for mistakes along the way um, as if this was happening within the cell. And I was like, oh, this, this could also involve a little classroom transformation. And then it, it blossomed into this full game that I now play multiple times throughout the year to help students really master the, the steps involved of protein synthesis. So to, to actually start doing this, you first need to set up where you're gonna play the game. So I've done it both inside and outside of the classroom, um, depending on what time of year I'm in. So I live in a place where winter gets really, really cold. And that's usually when I'm first going over protein synthesis. So by default, it has to be inside just because it's too cold usually outside. Uh, but at the end of the year, when we're also reviewing all the content of the course, I will go back and play this game again, but now we're in warmer weather, I do end up playing it outside. So depending on where you are, you just need to find a large open space um, where you can play this. And so in my classroom, I, the day that we're doing this, I you know, move everything around in my room to have a large open area where there's less hazards that students are going to be running around. So you also need to create different zones within your classroom that would represent different parts of the cell. 
So because transcription and translation happen in specific organelles of the cell, you need to transform your classroom to have these different areas to represent the different organelles of your cell. So I dedicate an area that represents my nucleus and I dedicate an area that represents my ribosome and then everything else is the cytoplasm of my classroom. <laughs> And so I've also done it where I've set my nucleus up out in the hallway. Um, so again, depending on your space, your layout, what you have available to you, you could do that as well. So once you have an area that's going to represent your nucleus, this is where the DNA of the game is going to live. And you will cut out little sequences or strips of DNA that will end up being transcribed and translated into a protein. Um, so you're going to have these little strips of DNA live inside the nucleus, meaning wherever you set up the nucleus in your classroom, they are going to live there and not leave at all. Just like DNA really in the cell will never leave the nucleus. And then in your ribosome section of your classroom, you need to have the codon charts that are going to be used to take your uh, messenger RNA and translate it into a sequence of amino acids. So within that area of your classroom, that's the ribosome, you will have those codon charts printed. The last setup piece involved here is using what something that you can pass off within the relay race. So you could just use pencil and paper um, where you have students transcribing and translating. Um, however, I find it's more fun um, and easier for handing off in the relay race to use mini whiteboards. So if you have mini whiteboards at your disposal, um, that is what I would recommend to use for students as they are transcribing and translating and relay racing around the classroom. All right, so once you have your classroom kind of set up for the relay race, now it's time to go over the different rules of the game. So for the relay race, you're gonna need to divide your class up into teams of four. Um, if you have some groups of three, that's okay. Um, it will work with groups of three or four, but no less than three and no more than four. And that is because each student in the group is going to be assigned a role. And the roles can change between rounds, but every student um, will have a specific job that they are required to do in order to um, make our proteins. It's up to you how you end up making groups. I personally recommend either preparing groups out ahead of time where you're um, putting students that might be kind of upper level with students lower level, or you generate them randomly. Um, I generally don't like letting students pick their own groups because sometimes you're going to get a team that is stacked with all kids that are going to do really, really well. And then you might have this other team over here where most kids don't know what they're doing. So I like to make mixed groups um, that are heterogeneous where you have students that are maybe upper level students with students that might need some help and they can work together um, to go through this game. All right, so within the groups, there are, again, four different jobs. And if you have only three people in a group, I will tell you which jobs will be combined. So the first person in the group is going to be the person that goes to the nucleus and copies down the DNA onto their whiteboard. So again, DNA cannot leave the nucleus, so we're gonna need to go to it and copy it down. So this student will take the whiteboard or, or paper and run to the nucleus section of the classroom and make sure to copy letter by letter exactly the DNA sequence. So they will then, once they copy that, run back to their group and pass off to the next person. This person in the group is gonna be responsible for transcribing that DNA into mRNA. And because I have students running through the classroom and making this a little bit more relay racy, I have this particular person have to go back to the area of the nucleus because that is where DNA is actually living. Um, so they need to take their whiteboard with their DNA written on it and go back to the nucleus and that is where they're actually going to transcribe the DNA um, into mRNA. So you could technically do away with that first person that ends up copying the DNA onto the whiteboard. Um, however, if you have groups of four, that, that step would ha happen first. They'd copy the DNA, bring the board back to their group, then the next person would go back to the nucleus where they're actually gonna transcribe the DNA into mRNA. Then once the DNA is transcribed into mRNA, they will run back to their group and the third person in the group is going to then identify the codons. So they're gonna separate 
that mRNA into the groups of three letters to represent the different codons um, from those uh, from that mRNA sequence. Once the codons have been marked, they will then pass off the whiteboard to the last person in the group, and this person is in charge of translating that mRNA into an amino acid sequence. So they will take the, the whiteboard and run to the ribosome section of the classroom where they will use the codon charts that are living within the ribosome to take that mRNA sequence and turn it into amino acid sequence. So once that has been done and you have your amino acid sequence, that person is going to bring the board up to the teacher to have it checked. And then if it's correct, the round is ended. Um, you can go through the round with everybody. Um, if not, if it is not correct, then the group needs to go back and find their mistake. Their mistake could be at any point within the process. Maybe they copied the DNA down wrong. Maybe they transcribed it wrong. Maybe they marked the codons incorrectly, or maybe it was translated incorrectly. So the group needs to then work together to find where that mistake happened um, in the process of creating their protein. So once I finally get a group that does correctly answer it, that's when the round will stop and we'll go through that particular um, protein synthesis sequence together as a class. And so then for the next round, I ask, I keep students within the same groups, but then they rotate what job they have. And this is to ensure that everyone in the group is understanding how to copy DNA, how to transcribe it, how to mark codons and how to translate it. And so if a student um, is unsure what they need to do, then they need to be relying on their group members to help make sure they are doing the correct thing when they do their particular job. So this is a team building exercise while also reviewing these important steps of protein synthesis. So I hope you try this game out in your classroom and hopefully kids will find it as fun and engaging as my students have. Again, I usually play it a couple times a year. We do it right after going through and actually teaching about the steps of protein synthesis. And then I will come back at the end of the year and play it again as part of our end of the year review before our state test. And students truly love it. They really get into the, the idea of a relay race. And you can make it even a little bit more competitive by adding some sort of prize to the groups that end up finishing first. So t try it out, check it out. Um, if you are looking to have this whole package done and ready for you, if you click on um, the TPT link in the description below, it will bring you to my pre-made directions, roles for students, DNA sequences that you might need um, to set this game up. So if you are looking to forego all that legwork of setting up this game, make sure to click on that link in the description below and have fun teaching all about those steps of protein synthesis.